please mute yourself. Um, you'll see a temporary, uh, the placeholder first slide on screen. We'll give people, do we, we'll figure out how many people are online, and once we've got a critical mass, um, we'll get started probably within the next minute or so, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, thanks everyone, good luck. Elif Hanım, mute alır mısınız? Mikrofonunuz o. Teşekkürler. Welcome, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Insights from the Fair Labor Association Social Impact Assessment of Nestle's Hazelnut Supply Chain in Turkey. Um, I'm Sharon Waxman, and I'm the president of the Fair Labor Association. I'm going to be the moderator for our webinar. I'm really excited to see the level of interest from around the world in today's presentation. Before we start, let me take care of a few housekeeping items. Uh, everyone on the call today has been muted so that uh, we can hear the presenters and all they have to share with us. Uh, we understand that you may have questions based on the presentations, so to facilitate those, you can submit a question using the chat box function on the Zoom platform. We'll do our best to answer common and clarifying questions during the webinar, but because of time limitation, we may not get to every uh, question. So to address that, we're going to list uh, every presenter's email address on a closing slide so that you can pose questions directly to them. Uh, so, And finally, today's webinar is being recorded, and we'll share a copy of that recording and the slides with everyone who registered. Uh, we have a lot of information to, to cover today, so we're going to uh, get started. We have an incredibly wonderful panel of expert speakers who are going to share their knowledge and insights. Uh, let me briefly introduce today's speakers uh, in order of their presentations. Uh, first is uh, Berju Bolak, who is the FLA's uh, director of the Fair Labor Agricultural Alliance program. Uh, Berju has 15 years of experience 
uh, including working at several multilateral agencies and international and non-governmental organizations and UN agencies. Uh, Berju has been working to combat child labor in Turkey's agriculture sector since 2013. Uh, we also have uh, Denise Austin, who is the Responsible Sourcing Manager at Nestle. Uh, Denise joined the Responsible Sourcing team at Nestle in May of 2016, and she's responsible for leading upstream operations for hazelnuts and vanilla to ensure that sourcing practices are in line with Nestle's guidelines. Uh, we're also delighted to have uh, Berger Turke who is the Global Sustainability Manager for Nuts at Olam. Berger joined Olam International in 2017 as the sustainable Sustainability Manager for Hazelnuts in Turkey and Georgia. This year in March, she was named Global Sustainability Manager for Edible Nuts, including hazelnuts, cashews, almonds, pistachios, and walnuts. Uh, our Another speaker that we have with us today is Ezra Sirsacek, who is CSR Program Coordinator at Balsugita, a position she's held since November of 2016. Uh, Ezra joined Balsu in September of 2008. Uh, our last uh, speaker is Elif Bor, who is a labor expert at Turkey's Ministry of Family, Labor, and Social Services. Uh, Elif joined the General Directorate of Labor, of Labor of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security in 2011. She's an expert on child labor and completed her thesis on the issue of examining the econometric determinants of child labor. I'm really uh, grateful to each of our panelists for taking the time to present today with their expertise uh, and insights by the end of today's webinar. Each of us will have, first, a better understanding of the differences between social compliance audits and social impact assessments. Second, the scope of our social impact assessment pilot. And third, insights that we can apply to our own work from each of the social impact assessment partners. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, to our speakers are going to provide their professional insights on a landmark FLA pilot project that tested interventions to protect workers in the hazelnut supply chains of Nestle and its suppliers, Balsu and Olam. We uh, at the FLA know that companies need to go beyond monitoring workers' rights and labor conditions in supply chains to meet their human rights obligations. Uh, leading companies that we'll hear from today make a difference in workers' lives and the lives of workers' families when they actively seek out and implement the interventions that work best. Uh, that was the impetus behind uh, our decision at the FLA to undertake our first social impact assessment. We recognize that compliance audits, audits while effective at identifying labor violations, were not really sufficiently reflecting the complexity of agricultural supply chain issues, or more importantly, capturing the results of remediation. Today, our speakers will bring to life our evaluation work and share the real-life impact that some of their interventions are having. So let's uh, begin with the FLA's uh, Berju Bola. Thanks, Sheridan. Uh, today, during my presentation, I will provide an overview on the background methodology and briefly talk about the key findings of the impact study that we conducted last year. Uh, I'll start with the background, but first I'll provide the brief information on issues around uh, seasonal migratory agriculture workers in Turkey. Well, uh, each summer thousands of seasonal workers migrate to the uh, Black Sea region to uh, harvest hazelnut. Here we need to emphasize that uh, seasonal migrant agriculture workforce prevalent not only in hazelnut, but also in other agricultural commodities. Risk of child labor, uh, low literacy level, lack of formal contracts, poor living conditions are common issues in the seasonal migratory agricultural work. Uh, and in terms of our work with FLA affiliates to address issues in hazelnut harvest, 
uh, I need to mention our core work with them. First of all, FLA has conducted regular independent external monitoring assessment of social compliance in the hazelnut supply chains of Nestle, Olam and Balsu in Turkey since 2013. And between 2013 and 17, a total of uh, 27 social compliance audit conducted in these three supply chains. And in 2018, when FLA member companies remediation programs got matured, uh, partners decided to delve de deeper beyond traditional social compliance audits and conduct a social impact assessment study. And main aim was to understand if the actions undertaken by three companies in their respective supply chains have led to improvement in the conditions for the workers. Uh, one of the primary drives in this piloting was to identify the promising solutions, what works for whom and where and positive pilots. Uh, this pilot study focused mostly on the, uh, on the impact of child labor, but of course intervention often targeted several groups of beneficiaries such as seasonal migrant workers, local community, uh, children at risk, farmers, female workers, and also different areas, for instance, health and safety or labor rights. And uh, our methodology followed the combination of the logical framework model and the counter, uh, counterfactual analysis to estimate the impact of the intervention. Uh, the logical framework model helped to map the theory of change by outlining the linkage from inputs to activities, outputs, outcomes to impact. And to estimate the impact, comparisons were made against the conditions where the intervention activities did not take place. The uh, counterfactual analysis also allowed to answer the questions such as what would be the situation, uh, what would the situation have been if the intervention had not taken place and what could be the outcomes directly attributable to the implemented intervention. Uh, also, we used the historical data, the farm's performance data were reviewed and analyzed against the FLA code of conduct and benchmarks, particularly the data related uh, to child labor and young workers. Uh, we should note that remediation activities need to be reach a certain level of maturity before an impact uh, can be measured. Uh, a total of four evaluators worked for the study, uh, thanks to them. Uh, field level data collection was scheduled at the time of peak harvest season in August last year. And in terms of sampling over the course of the study, FLA interviewed with uh, 235 workers, 20 children, 18 labor, in, uh, labor intermediaries, 20 farmers and uh, 49 local stakeholders. And uh, now I, if I need to give some um, key findings, uh, I should mention, I should start uh, with the mentioning uh, child labor. Uh, we recorded some efforts to mitigate uh, risk of child labor uh, have been successful. Uh, summer schools are one of the two intervention areas where impact target was achieved. Summer schools also fill the gap by providing safe environments where children are supervised and their basic needs are covered while their families uh, work in the hazelnut garden. Uh, three companies support these safe spaces also contribute to the positive change on uh, child labor. Uh, in terms of uh, we both uh, documented both uh, an increase in the number of children attending summer schools since their establishment five years ago and a downward trend in uh, children working in the hazelnut garden. In the counterfactual location, uh, meaning control group, where there is no intervention uh, taking place, the percentage of child labor was three times higher than in locations where the impact assessment was conducted. Uh, worker training interventions are broad and complex and no model fits all situation. Occupation, health and safety related activities evaluated within the scope of worker training was identified the, uh, as most effective uh, component of these trainings. Uh, and this component made a strong impression uh, on workers and um, resulted in application in their daily activities. 
uh, and distribution of personal protective equipment by companies also strengthened the impact of training and satisfied not only workers but also farmers. Uh, other labor issues covered during the training such as wages, working hours and employment contracts have not yet achieved their desired results in part because they are not under the uh, control of a single actor. Uh, labor intermediary training is a new area and assessment findings show that the pace of the change is slow. Nonetheless, training activities have, uh, have turned some labor contractors in, into social compliance partners. And uh, Olam uh, choose to make, a, uh, make employment contracts a primary objective uh, its sustainability program and for the first time seasonal migrant uh, agricultural workers in hazelnut has started to work under a uh, contractual agreement with companies efforts uh, and balso strong women strong agriculture program occupies a unique place among interventions the training is perceived mostly uh, as promoting the well-being of the local community while it's also popular for promoting women's empowerment and the program also diffuses tension caused by assessment fatigue and price uncertainty. Uh, renovation uh, activities, renovation of um, worker shelter activities or provision of water and uh, sanitation is another intervention area that achieve direct impact in workers' life by addressing their dire need for safe and sanitary housing, of course, and improvement in accommodation conditions touches upon a very basic human needs and has an immediate effect on the health and well-being of worker families. Uh, finally, in each of the interventions assessed in this process, in the study, government was a, a, a necessary partner. I should stop here and hand over the discussion to you, Sherry. Great, thank you, Berger, for that really helpful uh, overview outlining the methodology and the outcomes and the context. And uh, now we're gonna turn to our affiliates to hear firsthand about their experience. And we'll begin with Nestle and, and Denise uh, Austin. Denise, if you could comment for us on, on how the social impact assessment fits within Nestle's overall sustainability strategy, uh, as well as sharing your reflections on the process. Sure. Thanks, Sharon, and thanks, Burju. Firstly, I would like to walk you through our journey to the responsible sourcing of hazelnuts in Turkey, which started in 2012. We source around 4,000 tons of hazelnuts annually, since the majority of the volumes, up to 85%, is coming from Turkey. It is there that we focus the main part of our responsible sourcing program. We are working closely with our suppliers, Olam and Balso, the Turkish Ministry of Family, Labor and Social Services, local NGOs and the FLA to improve working and living conditions for workers and creating safe spaces for children uh, in our hazelnut value chain. We've started the program with the farm level compliance audits back in 2012 with the FLA to understand the conditions during harvesting. The results showed widespread and serious challenges in the upstream hazelnut supply chain in Turkey. The risks are around safe and healthy living and working conditions for the many temporary migrant workers employed during the harvest period and the existence of child labor. Since then, we've done the farm level audits annually until 2018. Following that, we've started our collaborations on the summer school program, which provides access to education for the children of workers during hazelnut harvesting period to help eliminate child labor in line with the government's national program on the elimination of child labor. In 2018, we completed the pilot project guided by the US Department of Agriculture's guidelines for eliminating child and forced labor in agricultural supply chains, which give us more understanding on the living, working conditions of workers, as well as their demographic profiles. Within this time frame, we improved our capacity on supply chain mapping 
risk management systems, as well as monitoring and remediation. From Nestle to hazelnut farms, we have seven layers within the value chain. Seasonal workers who are migrants, labor brokers who bring thousands of workers to the Black Sea and cut 10% wages of workers, farmers, hazelnut collectors, crackers, and tier one supplier. This is the picture of a typical hazelnut value chain. And we have been, and we have to work with all these actors to improve the condition and as well as creating safe spaces for children via school programs. With the help of in-depth research studies like workers profiling, labor force mapping, we now better understand the root cause of child labor and labor rights issues in our upstream supply chain. Thanks to these learnings and experience in implementing the work on the ground, we redesigned our responsible sourcing program and its requirements for hazelnuts. We now have 100% traceability for all, the volumes, for all the volumes coming from Turkey based on a segregation system. Our program requires key interventions related to creating safe spaces for children, responsible recruitment, and better working and living conditions for workers in the sourcing villages in Black Sea, as well as in the place of origin of seasonal migrant workers in Southeast Turkey. As you can see, we are not doing this on our own and we work hand in hand with our suppliers, NGOs, industry organizations and the government. We reach approximately 13,000 workers, farmers and their families annually through key program interventions. So the level of maturity of our hazelnut program allowed us to, me to move beyond audits. Indeed, we were finding that repeating of social compliance audits year after year did not allow us to gain any further insights into the issues on the ground. Audits were not able to tell us about the impact of the interventions on the ground. In addition, we needed to check if we are implementing the right methods to improve the program further. In 2018, we agreed to shift our approach to measuring through social impact assessments carried out by the FLA. We assessed the impact of our actions and activities around trainings, renovations of shelters, access to water, sanitation and hygiene facilities, and summer school, school programs for children. The study showed us that our efforts, especially targeting child labor, have proved fruitful. The villages with summer schools in particular have led to a fall in child labor comparing to control points which have no interventions at all. The trainings on labor rights and responsible recruitment built the awareness within the labor community and led to certification of labor brokers as well as application of contracts between farmers workers and labor brokers which is a completely uncommon practice for the traditional informal agricultural sector we follow the recommendations from the fla to train the workers in their places of origin during the quieter months when participants have more time and energy. Also in the harvest areas where workers need guidance on issues such as wages, hours of work or occupational health and safety. This recommendation helped us to reach more workers as well as a considerable increase on the number of contracts and certification of labor brokers, especially within this year. While this progress is welcome, we realize that there is much more work to do in a challenging environment where labor practices are traditionally informal and workers even move between farms every three to four days in the same region during the harvest where we have around 400,000 smallholder farmers in total. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Denise. It's really useful to hear the opportunities and challenges presented by the pilot and to better understand how an approach like a social impact assessment 
la- uh, lashes up with Nestle's broader sustainability strategy. We'll, we'll have an opportunity to hear more from you a bit later in the webinar. Uh, for now, I want to shift our focus to Nestle's hazelnut suppliers like Olam and, and Balsu, as we all know, operate on the ground level, and in this project, we're involved directly in its implementation. Uh, Berju from Olam and Esra from Balsu, I'm interested in hearing from each of you the lessons learned that uh, emerged from the social impact assessment pilot and how this study findings informed your company and its sustainability program. I'm going to start with uh, Olam, with Berger 2K from uh, Olam. So over to you, Berger. Thank you, Sharon. Um, since 2012, as Olam, we have been taking actions to support farmers and seasonal workers and to improve conditions in the hazelnut supply chain in Turkey, in line with our commitment to develop supply chains that respect people and human rights and where no children or adults are subject to illegal, forced, or abusive labor practices. We partnered with government, ministries, industry, customers, and NGOs, and uh, we are focusing our actions on the following key areas. So first one is improving workers' livelihoods and incomes. The second is improving working conditions and eliminating unacceptable uh, labor practices. Third one is supporting seasonal workers and families. And the last one is empowering women agricultural workers. So as Olam, we wanted to measure the real impact of our sustainability program on our target groups, such as farmers, workers, children, and our stakeholders. Regular audits can reveal labor rights violations, but social compliance evaluations often fail to demonstrate the full effect of remediation on the target groups. So social impact assessment helped us to see the impact of our social projects and created opportunity for us to identify which programs are positive and are making a positive difference to the communities. It allowed us to review the ongoing programs, see the gap in the field, and choose the correct program to allocate resources for future programs. Um, the counterfactual analysis allowed us to have a control point to enable us to answer questions such as Burju from FLA has mentioned, what would the situation be if the intervention had not taken place and what outcomes could be directly attributed to the intervention? Having a counterfactual location, so as a control, control group in, in the OLAM supply chain allowed the assessment team to measure the overall impact of our sustainability program. The assessment team concluded that it is different, its different components complement each other and contribute to create a safety net encompassing key issues in our supply chain, even if some of the issues or targets have not yet been reached. Of course, this does not mean that compliance-based audit is not preferable for us. Compliance-based audit is useful in many cases as identifying the weaknesses in the systemic compliance processes, and it generates paths for improvement on those specific findings. In some cases, guidance provided by a compliance audit assists us to reduce the risk for non-compliance. So therefore, as OLAM, we think that a mix of both assessment methodologies should be used together in order to benefit from their positive aspects. So I talked about the methodology and now uh, measuring the impact was very crucial for our work. So besides our internal monitoring programs, the third party independent audits, um, are, we use them as a tool to improve the program. So FLA social impact assessment focused on five main issues as was discussed before. I will not touch upon all of them because our t- time constraint, but I would look as, uh, I would like to focus on a couple of findings. The first finding will be on summer schools. The social impact assessment had taken place in the Esma Hanum summer school in the West Black Sea region, which Olam is opening since 2015 in cooperation with the International Labor Organization, ILO. As you can see from the table, um, the number of children coming to the summer school has tripled from 30 children in 2015 to 91 children in 20. 18. The number of seasonal migrant children has also increased fourfold 
during the same period from 17 children in 2015 to 82 children in 2018. So if we look at the counterfactual uh, area versus the intervention areas, uh, we will see that the rate of children below 16 years old is significantly higher at the counterfactual points, and the average age of these children is lower there. And you can see um, here on this table on the right hand side, the pie chart with children aged between 13 and 15, which is the blue um, uh, part, is 22% in the contrafactual area compared to 6% in the intervention areas. Looking at these numbers, we can conclude that summer schools are playing an important role for children in these communities and also helping to reduce child labor significantly. However, uh, social impact assessment also showed us that attracting children, specifically, especially ages between 13 to 15, who are considered most at risk of child labor and securing their regular attendance at summer school remains a challenge. So this, uh, the assessment suggested activities for us to meet these children's educational needs. And as OLAM, we can mobilize additional resources to increase the capacity of the summer schools and host more children, particularly at risk children ages between 13 and 15, and address infrastructure issues that affect daily operations at the school. For these, we have developed specific programs for children aged between 13 and 15 in the harvest of 2019. So another key learning is about the labor intermediary, the contractors. The assessment highlighted the need to continue to strengthen relationships with labor contractors or intermediaries in our supply chain, who are integral part to the seasonal, work, seasonal migrant workers in the hazelnut sector. Following up on this recommendation, as OLAM, we have continued mapping all of our supply chain. And I would like to happily say that we have reached 100% of our West Black Sea region labor contractors. We organized trainings for them and registered them with the Turkish Employment Agency. We are providing support to these intermediaries all year round to help improve conditions for seasonal workers. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Berju. Now I'm going to turn to uh, Esra Sersacek from Balsu. Uh, and over to you, Esra. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Balsu implements programs to support hazelnut workers in order to improve working and living conditions with a focus on child labor and responsible recruitment practices. This is done under the social compliance program we run since 2013 to build a sustainable supply chain as biggest Turkish exporter and world's top three manufacturer over 40 years. While running this social program, identifying emerging issues was very important and the programs were developed over the time accordingly with the multi-stakeholder approach. Social impact assessment to 2018 for BASU was a pilot designed to delve deeper into the assessment of the five intervention projects for safe spaces, labor contractors training, worker trainings, renovations, and strong women, strong agricultural program, and whether it led to any improvements for the hazelnut workers in our supply chain. As well, so we are happy to say that with the interventions for the social development of the workers, we managed to increase awareness on child labor, facilitate workers' access to public services and grievance mechanism with a result indicating that there is 6.5 decrease in number of children arriving in the Basu supply region, according to the findings. Moreover, since 2018, there are increasing number of employment contracts drawn between workers and farmers that is also approved by the National Employment Agency. This year, through Basu social workers only, 51 employment contracts were drawn between labor contractors, worker heads, workers, and the farmers. 
I would like to quickly summarize lessons learned and emerging findings from the report for, for Balsu for each intervention. As per safe spaces for children, Balsu in partnership with Young Lives Foundations opened summer schools to create safe space in hazelnut sourcing villages designed for children at risk and child laborers during the harvest period since 2014. In Beiran village, for example, where we open summer schools every year, since then we have managed to reach 8% of all the children arriving at the region by the mentioned village. SIA report states the fact import, importance of attracting and securing attendance older children aged 13 and 15. Our NGO partnerships for summer schools designed accordingly since summer schools fill an essential gap to take children off the gardens. Moreover, we continue to work with ILO since 2018 to benefit from various model, models and diversify use of sources in this model. Impact evaluation on labor contractors and workers training showed us that we had to focus on designing tailor-made and different programs. That is for labor contractors, worker heads, workers and women workers separately. Social impact assessment findings indicate the necessity of enhancing the role of local authorities and universities as an agent of change in Balsu supply chain, as well as to increase the efficiency of the trainings. Balsu signed the cooperation protocol with the local Düzce University in 2018 December. This was the first in the hazelnut industry for collaboration on social program, such as origin trainings that takes place for workers at their hometowns before they leave for crops of the agricultural products. The trainings in the workers' hometowns took place in partnership with relevant ministry offices and local agencies, as well as civil society organizations and Düzce University. Highlights were made for the transparency in calculation of food and accommodation, costs to achieve a real daily wage, the calculation of overtime pay, labor intermediary, recruitment services regulation, and occupational health and safety. Another in intervention applied in the field was renovations. The accommodation has been provided to seasonal agricultural workers by farmers in West Black Sea region. Farmers allocate their outbuildings to seasonal workers. Balsu conducts a needs assessment in these buildings and carried out water, sanitation, refurbishment works to improve living conditions of seasonal workers since 2017. When considering cost benefit ratio, renovation was among one of the strongest inter interventions since we shared responsibility with the farmers for the sustainability of this project now. Within the Strong Women, Strong Agricultural project, we aim to reach more women as stakeholders to combat child labor. This brought the importance of the identified sources of funding which Balsu managed to receive state support and state funds were available for the training on women in rural areas in 2018 and 2019 at various regions. As stated in social impact assessment report, women's empowerment and contribution to the livelihood sources is the core of the program. It was most welcomed by Balsu that social impact assessment in compared to the uh, IEM, instead of regular uh, audits, instead of providing a concrete compliance, non-compliant findings, it rather focuses on the background of the issues with an aim to support the optimum solution. Also, it was very important that the research, researchers who conducted the social impact assessment in the field were competent to carry out the methodology that all actors, such as workers, farmers, worker intermediaries actively participated in the process. Thus, a realistic result could emerge. In the following pro process, it did contribute to our work in terms of the original planning and monitoring activities. 
Great. Thank you uh, to Olam and Balsu for sharing your insights with all of us today. Uh, in addition to, and more importantly, your long-term commitment to addressing uh, the systemic challenges and issues that put workers' uh, rights at risk. We know from history, of course, that these issues won't be solved uh, in a month or even a year, but it's incredibly important that your companies are demonstrating commitment and playing a leadership role in, uh, in advancing the cause in the sector. Uh, next, we are really fortunate to have the Turkish government <clears throat> on today's webinar. Uh, the Ministry of Family, Labor, and Social Services has been an integral part of this journey and our, our efforts uh, in, in Turkey. Uh, the Turkish government, as many of you know, declared 20, the year 2018 as the year to combat child labor. And the work uh, Elif Bor will describe demonstrates the, the reality of the government's commitment. Um, Elif, if, if you could talk about your ministry's work with the private sector uh, from the framework of elimination of child labor and improving working and living conditions of seasonal migrant workers, uh, we would all find it very useful. Uh, sure. Thanks, Sharon. Hello, everyone. I would like to give information about the policies for combating child labor in Turkey and especially in seasonal agriculture, development in this field in Turkey from past to the present and ministries cooperation with related institutions, organizations and private sector. As you all know, uh, child labor continues to be an important problem in Turkey as it is in the whole world. Uh, which negatively affects the mental, physical, psychological, and generally the social development of the child. Therefore, the ministry attached special importance to the solution of the child labor problem. We have been actively combating child labor since the beginning of 1990s and provide coordination and cooperation between public institutions and organizations, workers and employers organizations, and NGOs who are working on child labor if I will first share the numbers of the child labor in Turkey, which are the data of the official statistical institution, Turkstat. The labor force survey for children was conducted four times to date by the Turkstat. The first survey was in 1994 and the last one was in 2012. As you see in the chart, there is a significant decrease over the years. In 1994, the rate of children working in economic activities was 15.2%. In 1999, 10.3%. In 2012, the employment rate of the children in economic activities was realized as 5.9%. Moreover, when we look at the distribution of the economically active children in Turkey in terms of the sectors, it is seen that 44.7% of working children are held in agriculture sector, 24.3% of them are in industry, and 31% in service sector. In other words, the majority of the children under the age of 14 are employed in the agricultural sector and work as unpaid family workers. Behind the declines in the current statistics on child labor, there have been studies for years. The historical process and studies involving legislation, strategy documents, and projects from past to the present day within the scope of company child labor start from 1990s. As you know, uh, Turkey has approved the United Na Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child Labor in 1990, and ILO has launched international program on the elimination of child labor, IPEC, and Turkey became one of the six countries participated in the program. And then unit of working children was established under the Directorate General of Labor of Ministry and Turkey has ratified the ILO conventions number 138 concerning minimum age and number 182 concerning eliminating the worst forms of child labor. After these milestones, in 2005, in order to combat child labor, our ministry was prepared national time-bound policy and program framework 
and it was implemented within the period of 2005-2015. Within the scope of this program, worst forms of child labor have been determined as working on the streets, working in heavy and hazardous work in small and medium-sized enterprises, working in mobile and temporary agricultural labor except for family business. After all these progress and works, in 2006, at the ILO Labor Conference, Turkey was chosen as the model country for combating child labor. Then in 2010, Turkey's efforts on combating child labor were accelerated, especially in seasonal agriculture. The Prime Minister's circular, which named improvement of work and social lives of seasonal commercial agriculture workers, was prepared by the ministry and published. Immediately after the circular, first step of the seasonal agriculture workers project, which we called shortly METIP, in implemented. Following the implementation of the project, the circular updated and then second step of METIP project has been implemented throughout the country. As I mentioned before, first national program was ended in 2015. After that, in 2017, the national program on the elimination of child labor was prepared with the main objective to eliminate especially the worst forms of child labor. Between these two points, in 2014, the national employment strategy, which is the main document guided the employment policies, entered into force. By 2018, in Turkey, as you said before, uh, the year was declared as the year of the elimination of child labor. As a result of all work done during the year, in 2019, within the scope of the second 100-day action plans of the presidency, combating child labor units were established in provincial based. I have quickly sorted the work done from past to the present, Following the chronological developments, I would like to briefly give you some details of the national documents I mentioned. The most basic and comprehensive document in the field of employment in Turkey is the National Employment Strategy. The strategy includes the strategy axes, policies, and measures to be implemented in 2023 to solve structural problems in the labor markets. In this context, under the axis of strengthening the relationship between employment and social protection, there is a special target on combating child labor. It is completely eliminating the worst forms of child labor in 2023 and reducing child labor rate in other fields under 2%. Complementary to all these overall objectives and targets with the main specific objective of preventing child labor, the national program on the elimination of child labor prepared. It has comprehensive measure, measures such as eliminating the poverty, increasing the quality and accessibility of education, improving public awareness and sensitivity, which are the main reasons for child labor. In the action plan annexed to the national program, the main policies, strategies and activities to be carried out between 2017-2023. Currently, the action plan includes 18 strategies and 100, 103 activities under seven policy pillars designed to eliminate child labor, especially the, especially the worst forms. In the national program, definition and scope of child labor, the main reasons of child labor, situation analysis, national and international regulations, priority target groups, work descriptions of institutions, national policies and objectives, and action plan are titled. You can reach this national program via our ministry website. An important milestone in this area for Turkey is the establishment of units of combating child labor in provinces. Within the scope of the second 100 day action plans of the presidency and national program on the elimination of child labor, in order to make our activities more effective in combating child labor and to increase the applicability and traceability of policies produced at central level, units of combating child labor were established. These units cooperate and ensure cooperation and coordination among all relevant institutions and organizations on the subject of identification and monitoring of child labor, 
with the role of working children from the labor force, providing access to public services needed by children and their families, and organizing activities to promote social awareness and sensitivity. As you know, seasonal agricultural labor is an area that requires special work in terms of the difficulty of housing and living conditions, informal work, relations with the environment, occupational health and safety, and child labor. Therefore, in addition to the basic policy documents and policies, I would like to mention the details of the METIP project. The circular issued in 2010 about seasonal agricultural workers was updated in 2017. New circular, which aims to eliminate the problems of workers and their families as seasonal agricultural workers with the duties assigned to the relevant institutions was published and entered into force. Within the scope of circular, METIP project was put into effect in nationwide. This project is aimed at combating child labor in seasonal agricultural and improving the working and living conditions of seasonal agricult agricultural workers. On the purpose of mapping and profiling about seasonal agricultural workers and their families, Seasonal Agricultural Workers Information System, which we called EMITIP, installation work to ensure the monitoring of public services in electronic environment has been completed and the system has been activated. And finally, we will look at the implement, implemented and ongoing projects about child labor uh, in order to support the activities in the national program on the elimination of child labor. As you see there, uh, there are many projects and works are implemented and ongoing in cooperation with international organizations such as ILO, UNICEF, GIZ, FLA, and private sector has, hazelnut companies such as Olam, Balsu, Yavuz Gıda, etc. Within the scope of the projects, many children and families are reached, children are withdrawn from work, trainings are provided to various groups like families, agricultural intermediaries, teachers, to combat child labor. According to our experience from all these projects, I can say that we got the most effective outputs in agriculture as a result of our studies with the private sector and international organizations because they know the area and needs of these agricultural workers very well. So as the ministry in the future, we want to expand our cooperation with the private sector and international organizations to other product groups. And uh, finally, I came to the end of my presentation in closing my words. I would like to thank FLA for organizing this useful work, to our companies for their cooperation and effective work, and to you for listening to me. Uh, I thank you all. Great, thank you, Ellie, for sharing your uh, unique and fascinating insights. Uh, you and your colleagues uh, in the government and the ministry have really become valued partners uh, in the FLA's agricultural work in Turkey, and we uh, look forward to you continuing that uh, partnership. Uh, at this point, I want to open the dialogue to our panelists and pose a couple of questions for you to answer. Because our, our time is lim limited and to give everyone a chance to answer, uh, please keep your responses brief. I note that we have about eight minutes uh, left for this section of the conversation. And uh, a reminder again for those who may have joined the call late, we'll be sharing the slides. Uh, and if, if you have questions that you want to pose directly to each uh, panelist, you can, we can facilitate that at the end through uh, sharing uh, email uh, addresses. So the question that I'd like each of you to think about and answer is, is how will your uh, company or institution continue to advance this work and address issues like child labor, decent housing, recruitment fees, and, and labor contexts in the, the supply chain uh, in the future. I mean, clearly we learned a lot from this, uh, this endeavor and the social impact assessment, and what's really important for us to understand is, is what's next. Uh, and if you could also uh, share one takeaway from the work that's going to help others uh, within the FLA community 
that are interested in uh, making a difference in workers' lives. Uh, let's start with Denise. Thanks, Sharon. So we've planned to carry out uh, social impact assessments to the programs where we have maturity. Uh, for example, cocoa is next and sugar is on the planning phase. On the other hand, we are not phasing out the farm level compliance audits. We will continue to use both assessment methodologies combined, depending on the maturity level of the suppliers, program, and as well as the risk topics in the country of origin. Having known the value chain actors and complexity of the issues in the hazelnut value chain, we continue working collectively with our suppliers, NGOs, and the Turkish government and report our progress transparently. The labor issues and the child labor are complex. It's not specific neither to Nestle nor to hazelnuts. It is a countrywide issue. This is why we need to work together with our industry peers pre-competitively as well as across industries, NGOs and the government. That is also why we are participating in the Harvesting the Future program and we are very excited about it. And we are happy to share our experiences and program details transparently with all the relevant stakeholders. We believe that only by working together we can make the systemic sectoral reforms. Um, before closing, I would like to thank to our uh, suppliers, sustainability teams and the NGO partners for their hard work on the ground. Also to the FLA team and the Ministry of Family, Labor and Social Services for their partnership through our journey on the responsible sourcing of hazelnuts. Thank you all. Great. Thanks so much, Denise. Uh, over to you, uh, Berju Turke, for uh, same question. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so at Olam, we have put sustainability at the heart of our business because it's the right thing to do. So social impact assessment emphasized the longstanding work with the government, civil society organizations, FLA, Olam, and other, other industry partners to implement solutions to address these systemic issues. We believe we must go beyond what is currently being done today. And we're focused on increasing the impact and reach of our activities to deliver improvements to working practices and social conditions for workers and their families. Um, so maybe a couple of um, numbers. In 2018, so after the, um, the social impact assessment, we worked with farmers and labor contractors in our supply chain to introduce labor contracts for hazelnut harvest workers, a first for the hazelnut sector and also for Turkey's agriculture sector. The contractual agreement includes a minimum wage guarantee, legal working hours, which is eight hours, health and safety, safe transportation, proper meals, and decent ho housing conditions alongside the ILO, the FLA, and the Turkish Employment Agency. A total of 196 contractual agreements are signed with 56 different labor contractors and farmers, and 140 of the contracts have been signed directly between farmers and workers as of today. So what does these numbers mean? So these contract numbers mean that a total of 1,619 different seasonal migrant workers in both East and West Black Sea region um, rights have been protected under these contracts. We have also developed labor intermediary and seasonal workers identification system. After the social impact assessment report, we continue to map our labor, inter labor intermediaries and so far reached to 156 labor intermediaries in our supply chain, which means that under these 156 labor contractors, there are 25,104 seasonal workers in their network. So I mentioned the summer schools play a critical role in supporting the children in the harvest communities. So what is next? The answer is this year in the 2019 harvest, we have piloted two new projects um, for the ages, for the children between ages 13 and 15 and to eliminate gender imbalance for children. Uh, we partner with an NGO titled as Kızlar Sahada in order to open up a football and development camps for children 
in both regions to include sports and gymnastics classes for children, as well as having workshops on gender equality and breaking stereotypes. The second project is about robotic coding, STEM classes for children. We also conduct and will continue to conduct surveys among the children aged between 13 and 15 in order to understand what kind of attractions can be organized during the harvest in order to draw them out of the farms. Growing responsibly is not just a sustainability initiative. Rather, it's embedded within Olam's overall business framework. As Olam, we have been investing and taking steps to support seasonal workers and farmers since 2012. And it's something we have long been committed to. So FLA and the social impact assessment has been constructive in helping to shine light on those areas where we can improve and strengthen the work we're doing. In the scope of this global vision, we have achieved significant gains. However, it is a long journey. We will improve our projects, continue to invest in responsible sourcing practices. We continue our trainings for farmers, workers to improve their consciousness on discrimination, gender inequality, forced labor, child labor, legal rights on working hours and grievance mechanisms. And lastly, as Denise from Nestle was saying, we know that these systemic issues cannot be solved only with our own efforts. We believe in the power of partnerships in cooperation with the government authorities, lo local authorities and NGOs, private companies and our customers. We believe that we can achieve a higher impact in a much shorter time. Thank you. Thanks so much, Berju. Um, Esra, uh, if, if you could uh, again answer the same question from uh, Balsu's perspective. I know that it's 10 o'clock, so we're going to need to um, ask our participants uh, to uh, hang with us until we can finish uh, the questions and for the speakers to try to keep their uh, comments uh, relatively short. Thank you again, Sharon. In accordance with the BASU Social Compliance Program, interventions for the social issues in hazelnut produ production will continue. BASU, we believe what is good for people it is good for the business. Labor contractors that are directly in Basu supply chain is contacted before they arrive in the hazelnut growing region. And we have received necessary information of the workers' data to make a harvest plan. Promoting employment contracts to prevent non-compliance issues was top in our agenda this year. Labor contractor received first aid trainings provided by the Dizu University a training where we want to extend this for workers also in following years. This is in addition to the regular occupational health and safety trainings. Moreover, we are also participating in the Harvesting the Future project where we are eager to share our knowledge and how our programs with workers, worker heads, labor contractors, farmers, women farmers have developed during the phase that will improve also our program in the process we believe multi-stakeholder approach is one of our strongest tool in reaching our goals in this journey. Balsu, through social workers, continue to reach workers when they arrive for hazelnut harvest. This year, for instance, we have reached 1,367 uh, workers when they arrive hazelnut harvest. This is in addition to the origin trainings where we have reached 228 workers at their houses. We want to develop our program with the teachers and women workers in partnership with relevant stakeholders in 2020 harvest. With support from Ministry of National Education, Basu in Collaboration with Nestle and Young Lives Foundations provided trainings to 20 teachers who work in Mardin and Shunak provinces. The aim was to increase the teachers' awareness on child labor issues, encourage them to inform families and mobilize relevant public institutions such as school commissions on seasonal migration and child labor monitoring. Moreover, we want to extend strong women, strong agricultural program where we run for women farmers in hazelnut producing seas to the origin where workers are coming from, since we believe empowering women is the way towards to the solution. 
In Bansu, we are improving our system for workers to reach us for support since 2016. Bansu grievance mechanism and temporary social workers has a very important role in receiving complaints from workers. Every year, Kurdish-speaking social workers employ during the harvest to ensure that language is not a barrier to complaints. This is also in addition to the hotline available 24-7. We believe providing safe space to the children is a very strong tool to take the children off the field, therefore to break the chain eventually. Our aim is to reach as many as children possible at the end of the each harvest and also to reach that one child whom destiny could be changed for a brighter future after they attend the summer school. We provide them while their families are in the field harvesting hazelnut that one day or one class spent in the summer school or one volunteer or teacher who could change their life forever. This year, as Balsu, we have also participated in a fundraising event in order to provide scholarships to 134 children who attended the summer schools and also continue their regular education when they are back hometowns. Various non-governmental organization models are implemented to provide safe spaces to the children with an aim to increase more children with the age of 13 and 15 are participated in summer school. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. Um, uh, based on uh, this, uh, the answers to these questions and uh, this entire webinar, it's really clear that we've, we've accomplished a great deal already uh, learned a lot from both uh, the impact assessment and the underlying uh, work uh, in the hazelnut sector um, and also that we have an incredible amount of work ahead. Uh, I'm really hopeful about uh, the possibility of continued progress and as we near the end of the hour I want to ask uh, the FLA's Berju will like to share what's next uh, from the FLA. Sure, briefly. Uh, for FLA, going forward, social impact assessment will be one of the core tools of uh, FLA. Uh, the method will be integrated in the social compliance assessment system, meaning uh, in FLA's accountability program. In addition to this, social impact assessment methodology will be further refined by focusing on data collection to recreate a baseline, where possible, of course. Uh, because we believe that good baselines are a good starting point to uh, measure impact. And also counterfactual data collection, uh, crucial to understand the impact. This uh, method, one of the must uh, when uh, conducting impact assessment. Uh, having said that, of course, FLA will keep continue to conduct social compliance uh, audits. Uh, in agriculture sector, uh, and I would like to mention that we are, uh, as uh, Dennis said, uh, let me repeat again, we are working on another impact assessment for cocoa supply chain of Nestle in Ivory Coast. And one more assessment on Olam's cocoa supply chain is on the pipeline. I think mentioning uh, those two also answer one of the question uh, of, um, of uh, audience. And as a final remark, uh, as a follow-up uh, to the work that FLA and its affiliates have taken in Turkey, it's apparent that seasonal migrant workers need to be ensured similar working conditions in all agriculture commodities that they work in throughout the year, not just one commodity. In the beginning, I mentioned that this is uh, not only hazelnuts uh, um, issue, but also they work in uh, other commodities as well. Hence, uh, the FLA, uh, through its Fair Labor Agriculture Alliance, in short, FLAA platform, uh, has established a project titled Harvesting the Future, uh, which focuses on uh, responsible recruitment of seasonal migrant workers and take uh, in Turkey. Uh, this project will undertake the similar work in a multitude of communities and in a uh, multitude of uh, companies uh, and Turkish government as a key partner uh, again in this project. Currently a total of eight significantly big multinational food beverage uh, company 
uh, retailers and their 16 suppliers are the project partner. Uh, we started the project implementation uh, beginning of August this year. Uh, currently, we are working on apricot, hazelnut, pistachio, grape and potato uh, within the harvesting the future project. Uh, and um, the, the learning from the impact assessment will be crucial in informing the work of this new project as we are now even more aware of what's more impactful and more meaningful for workers and their families and local communities. Uh, I, I should stop here and uh, finish my, uh, my part. Yeah, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Berju, uh, for sharing and outlining what's what's coming up next at the FLA. Uh, and you have the final words uh, for today's presentation. Uh, I really want to extend my uh, sincere thanks to each of the, the panelists. Uh, you're our experts uh, and excellent presenters, um, but you're also tremendously valuable partners in our effort and journey uh, to protect and, and improve workers' rights. Um, if you have questions about any of the presentations, uh, I encourage you to email the presenters directly. You can see each of their uh, email addresses on the screen, and again, we're going to share the slides, so you'll have that information uh, in, in your inbox. Um, as a reminder that the content of the webinar today is based on a report uh, published by the FLA earlier this year. And if you want to learn more about that work, uh, I encourage you to go to www.fairlabor.org and search Social Impact Assessment Hazelnut in Turkey to read or, or download the PDF for the report. Uh, thank you again for joining us and giving us uh, 10 additional minutes of your time. We're uh, grateful for your time and, more importantly, your support and commitment to the mission of improving uh, workers' lives. So thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to, uh, to our next webinar with all of you.